Welcome to another episode of the Student Manager Podcast. It's Fonger News, and we are here at Newport Beach Country Club, outside, beautiful sunny weather. Annie O'Brien just got back from a lunch talking Michigan Wolverines to incoming students, correct? And you are headed back to Ann Arbor soon. Yep, this Friday. And we were talking about before you're heading back, what's going to happen when you get back? What are you excited for? What are you looking forward to the most? So we get back about a week early. I'll move in um, Sunday and Monday to my sorority house. And since guys rush in the fall and girls don't rush until winter, the frats will just throw darties and parties all week long. So every sorority and every fraternity has their own schedule. So every Monday, like Monday through Friday, every sorority has a darty, a party. It could be a four by four, a two by two, the entire week. All right, Annie, you got to break this down because it's been a while since I've been <laughs> in college. When I think of four by four, two by two, I think of like in and out Burger. So what is a <laughs> four by four, two by two? Yeah, so four by four means four frats, four sororities, two by two, two frats, two sororities, or sometimes it's even like a two by one. So two frats and one sorority. All right. So for those of you who are listening, again, the Student Manager Podcast, we help the student process of the college search and admission process with the parents. And we talk about real things going on, like tell all Ann Arbor. I've been to Ann Arbor twice, the big house. I've been to Chrysler Arena. We'll get into that. So we're going to talk about Michigan, what you like, what you don't like, academics, the fun part, um, because you are the first Wolverine. You know that. Yeah. So the, the inaugural Wolverine that come on the Student Manager podcast. But I remember when you were a sophomore at Harbor and we jumped on the podcast with you and a bunch of your friends, I think you were just looking at the college search and admissions process they had, like, right, the little hallway yeah, and all the sure. colleges were down there. And there was a lot probably going through your mind, but why Ann Arbor? Why Michigan? How did you get here? Okay, yeah. So we had all those college events at Newport Harbor, and they don't have a ton of the big schools come because, you know, the big schools like Michigan, UCLA, everyone already wants to go there. They don't need to market themselves to people. And I knew I wanted big sports, Greek life. I wanted a big student population. And I knew Ann Arbor was a great college town. Like year after year, it gets ranked number one in all of the magazines. So I thought that would be a great place to start looking. And then beginning of my junior year, I took an ACT in Michigan, and that was when I first visited and, like, fell in love with the campus. It's so gorgeous. It kind of had everything I was looking for, a really cool downtown, and kind of just checked all my boxes. And you said you fell in love with it because being there twice, and, and, and I know some things I liked about it, what I did not like about it. First, what time of the year did you go? I went in, like, mid-October, and by then it was already, like, 35 and rainy and like not great weather and it was in the middle of COVID. So there wasn't a single student on campus. So when I fell in love with it then, I knew if I fell in love with no one on campus, then with everyone on campus, I had to love it even more. And that's a great point that you made because if you can go, and my recommendation is always go visit that school in its worst conditions, right? When it's yeah. like 20 below, zero degrees, or when it's snowing, because look at right now, besides we have some ambiance with some wind in the background, but that's why I love doing these podcasts live and in person, but it's sunny out here. So what's your recommendation to a high school student in here in Orange County, maybe specifically Newport Beach, looking to go out of state? Yeah, if you're looking to go out of state, I would definitely recommend visiting in the fall or winter when the weather isn't like it is in Southern California, because that's what you're going to be living with almost like 70% of the year. Because in Ann Arbor, it's sunny about September and almost halfway through October. And then up until almost the end of the school year, end of April, it's not that warm. So you're kind of stuck with that weather almost all year round. So you have to get used to it. You have to really like it to go there. But at the same time, I know people who don't love that weather and go there. And going, it's like you're going out. You're constantly busy. You don't really think about it, honestly. But definitely visit the college at its worst. And you had a little head start. I mean, let's be honest. Your family is from the Cleveland area or Ohio. I don't want to be your dad. No, sorry, OB. <laughs> like if we say Cleveland, he's going to say something bad with the Cavaliers or whatever the Indians. But you're from Ohio. So you're from the Midwest. You had that experience growing up because then you transferred over to uh, St. Joachim's. I remember that first day too as well, coming out from the Midwest. So did that help play a little part of knowing like what to expect? Yeah, definitely. And being a ski family going every year, I kind of knew I liked the cold. I knew that wasn't something that I didn't want in a college. So I was kind of open to four seasons and like the fall in Ann Arbor is gorgeous. So that's definitely an added bonus, even though 
it, it, it does get super cold. Like it's the fall and spring are definitely something to look forward to. And you did go in the fall and the, the colors are great. It's beautiful October. I think of Madison at that time of the year. I mean, Madison was another school that you looked at. That's something we talked about. If it wasn't Michigan, what was your other alternatives and options? So my other reach schools, um, along with Michigan, my other tops were UVA, which I hadn't visited, but it kind of has a similar vibe. Cute college town, frats and sororities, decent sports, not great, but definitely sports to go to still. And then I was really interested in other Big Ten schools, Ohio State, Wisconsin. And then I kind of threw out a few private schools, Duke, Vanderbilt, Georgetown, and then definitely the UCs as well. All right. I have to ask this question. If I don't even know. Did you get in Georgetown? Yeah, I did. I got in early. Okay. So you got in the Georgetown. Your sister, obviously, Grace is a Hoya. Your dad's a Hoya. Did that play any factor of like, I want to create my own little road in destiny, Annie O'Brien. I'm not going to follow my sister and I'm not going to follow my dad. Definitely a little bit. Um, it was kind of a last minute application. I wasn't going to apply at all in the first place. And then I was like, I might as well just throw it out there. So applied really last minute, but still applied for the early deadline. And I knew I didn't really want a small school. It's like around 8,000 students, doesn't really have Greek life, has a little bit of off campus, but not a ton. And then they don't have football or they have really small football. Okay. Between you and I, like the way we talk, they don't have, they do have football, but they... Not our kind of football. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Obi. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but obviously it's a great school and I'm majoring in political science or international relations. So that's not a bad place to be for that. But definitely 8,000 to 35,000 students, that's a big difference. Well, 35,000 students. And then you think of Saturdays in the fall, the big house is over 100,000, right? Yeah. So, and, and we'll get into that. But you exactly knew what you wanted, what you did not want. So is there any advice to a parent listening that maybe wants their kid to go to a certain school or that high school junior or senior that's kind of still debating, like what to look for besides just that sweatshirt? Yeah, definitely. So what I, I started visiting places pretty early on. Um, I started with California schools, UCLA and USC, just did the basic tour, seeing if I liked the big school atmosphere, if I liked the sports, the frats and sororities, if I liked that environment. And then from there, you kind of decide if you like that, go look at other schools similar to that, like a Michigan, a Wisconsin and Ohio State. And if you don't, maybe start looking at smaller schools, like maybe a Pepperdine, a Georgetown, a Vanderbilt type of school. What you said, and you said it so eloquently, and, and we haven't gotten into your academics, to what it takes to get into Michigan, but that is exactly what you should be doing. If you're younger and if you're ahead of the program, if you're like a freshman or sophomore, I always say, go visit UCLA, go visit USC, go visit Irvine, go visit even Long Beach State where I graduated yeah. from or like Pepperdine or US, USD. And if based off of what you like or don't like, that can take it to the then out of spend state. spend the money to travel. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's talk about Ann Arbor because I just remember going in there in the summer. It was like 103 degrees Hot, yeah. and we land. Well, we went to Michigan state first and then we drove from East Lansing to Ann Arbor and we got there like around six o'clock and I love facilities. So I had to go on like near the football field. I, I didn't get on the field that evening cause we had a tour the next day, but then I walked onto like the softball field, the baseball field, the track way at the lower part of the campus. And I'm like, this campus is sweet, like State Street. So when you're walking around, if someone hasn't been there before, let's visually talk. Where would you like to start the campus tour of Ann Arbor? Let's just paint the picture and like maybe we'll go through the campus. We'll go through State Street because you kind of have to go through the student union and we'll talk about that. Yeah. So I lived on the hill, which is the very opposite side of State Street. So it's about half a mile across. So I'd start um, on the hill. I gave a few people tours. So I started in my dorm, showed them the entire hill, which is four freshman dorms. And then you walk across a little bridge, and that's like the start of Central Campus. So um, the Ann Arbor campus, it's Central Campus and then North Campus, which is just a bus ride away where they do have a lot of dorms. I got really lucky with my dorm. So start there, walk across to Central Campus. And what was your dorm called again? Alice Lloyd. Alice Lloyd. And it was like brand new, renovated in like 2010. Is that the dorm to live in? That's the dorm. That's Fresh. the dorm. If you want to be on the hill close to Greek life, that I thought that was super fun. But then there's also South Quad, East Quad, North Quad, and West Quad, which is a lot of athletes. So that's also a fun place if you like want to surround yourself with those kind of people too. So once you cross that bridge, you're kind of by like the natural sciences buildings. You walk through central campus buildings. And a lot of things are just general undergrad buildings. Like they do have specific classes in them. But it's all kind of like 
my classes were scattered all across freshman year. And then once you get to State Street, first place you're going is the M Den for sure to get gear. So what was your first thing that you bought? A Michigan sweatshirt my junior year when I went. And you were able to just, do you still have it? I still have it, yeah. <laughs> and your brother, I, I know your brother has swag. Wearing, he does. Wearing, wearing the Michigan, like Harbaugh and, and whoever they have, uh, the running backs. And, and you guys are going to be good this year. Yeah, really good. I'm so excited. We're ranked number two, I like, think. I think Michigan has a, it's Michigan and Ohio State, but yeah. Michigan, ha- and you, we were at your house watching it last year. Yep. I think Michigan has a great chance with your running back and your quarterback to do some, potentially be in the national championship game. I do too. And I, th- I think I'm going to stay for the Ohio State game this year. So I'm not coming back for Thanksgiving to stay up for that one, which should be fun. Will the family go back and watch it in Ann Arbor? Possibly. My brother definitely wants to come out. So we'll see if that can happen. But yeah. So since we're on the topic of football, let's talk about game day. We can go anywhere. We can s- start with an afternoon game and what time you wake up. And then from actually, do you make it? into the stadium, and then if they're blowing them out, when do you leave? Walk us through a game day experience in Ann Arbor. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go through two. One will be in the freshman dorm, and then one will be what this year will look like. So in the freshman dorm, I got really lucky. I had a super social floor. So the very first game day, we have a lot of big noon kickoffs. It was a big noon kickoff. I can't remember who it was against. I think maybe Colorado State. And at 6 a.m., the guys on our floor brought massive speakers banging on the doors, walked in, brought us shots, woke us up that morning. We started getting ready. And then you start pre-gaming the dorms. Tailgates start around like 9, 9.30. So you kind of make your way over. The tailgates are on the way to the stadium. So like 15-minute walk from our dorm. And we kind of just hop from tailgate to tailgate. And then around like 20 minutes into the game, the tailgates kind of start to mellow out and everyone walks to the big house. I made it to every game which it's not unusual for Michigan student too because our football is so good. And it was awesome. And then everyone stays for Mr. Brightside in the third quarter. And then if we're blowing them out, we leave by like middle of the fourth quarter. And Mr. Brightside, that's your tradition. Every college has their tradition. Wisconsin has jump around. Virginia Tech has inter Sandman. So for those that don't really follow football, talk about Mr. Brightside. It's awesome. So my first college football game ever was in the big house last year Colorado State and I remember my mom sending me the song after I got in and I had known the song it's like a huge like song at high school parties college parties whatever and she was like do you know the words to the song sent me a video of it in the big house and I was like whoa that that is insane had no idea it was in the third quarter and I remember they put it on and everyone stands up like the entire stadium knows it even the parents the little kids that are there it's awesome and then if they're blowing them out you dip And where's Annie O'Brien? Where are freshmen hanging out? Where are the upperclassmen hanging out? So we're most likely going to Joe's Pizza, which is um, on like the western part of campus, and then going to take a power nap and then getting ready to go back out at night. How long are these power naps for? Like usually range, if we have a noon game and the game's over at like 4.30, maybe nap for like an hour, go to the dining hall, go pick up, and then start getting ready to go out. Refresh it up, get get, get some gasoline in that tank to get ready for the night. (laughs) All right, so is it easy in Ann Arbor if you're a freshman with fake IDs, underage drinking, besides maybe the fraternity houses and the bars are are in the dorms, how does that, how is it in Ann Arbor? So we don't have a huge bar scene. There's definitely like three or four that only juniors and seniors can go to and like everyone kind of knows that. And then there's two called, one's called Blue Leprechaun, everyone calls it Blep. And then one's called Brown Jug, which is right down the street. And both of those, Everyone goes there to pregame and like they'll kind of laugh at your ID and then let you in. And they have like twenty dollars pitchers. Blep has like a pitcher for every single um, Big Ten team. So they have like one called like um, I'm trying to remember the names like Nittany Knickers or something. Like they have like one for Nebraska, one for Iowa, one for Michigan, Michigan State. They have like a little brother jug, like stuff like that, which is really fun to pregame. And then there's one called Scorekeepers. Everyone calls it Skeeps, which is where all the athletes go and all like the non-Greek life people. I've never been, but my friends say it's awesome. So that'll be, definitely be somewhere I want to check out this year. Hey, so, I mean, you might have mentioned some names already, but so in, in a town, because Ann Arbor, it's there, there's certain towns, right? College towns where you can get away with some of that For sure. underage drinking. And then there's other towns where it's strict. Like Boulder, I hear it's very, very strict with underage drinking. But some of these other bars, where are the seniors, where are the 
if you're 21, where are you hanging out? Most likely Rick's. They have like karaoke on Wednesdays and like other stuff going on throughout the week. And then there's one other place. I'm forgetting the name, but there's like two places mostly that everyone will hang out if you're 21. So after these long tailgates, party at the games, power nap, going out, late night munchies, where are you eating late night munchies? You know, you're buzzed, you're hungry. Where are you, drink, where are you eating? There's two places. So the first place we discovered second semester, it's called Good Time Charlie's. It's like on the way back from all the frats. It's Mexican. They have the best chicken quesadilla ever. It's so good. And then the other place is Joe's Pizza. It's like New York style pizza. They have them all over New York. And it's open till like, I think, 3.30 a.m. After that Mexican food, the next morning, you... <laughs> a lot of people probably aren't feeling good. I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now you wake up the next morning, right? Or the next afternoon, depending <laughs> on when you wake up, based off of, we'll get into the academics. Where are you going to soak up all that booze or getting your first bite of the day? Definitely Stray Hen. It's like farther in downtown. So it's usually an Uber for us because we were on the hill and a hungover walk that far is not happening. <laughs> Great avocado toast, breakfast sandwiches, and... Basically, every time you go there, you see the entire hockey team. So that's where the hockey team's hanging out? Yep. And by the way, Michigan hockey, we saw them against Wisconsin two years ago. Michigan just kicked their ass. Like, so they're fun. legit They're legit players. So let's move on because, yes, there's football in the fall, but I went to, I love Chrysler Arena. Now, my experience at Chrysler Arena, it was, here's our visit to Michigan. I don't even know why we went to Michigan because none of my kids were able to get in. They all got... <laughs> deferred right because they don't reject yeah. anybody you have to actually click that button after july 1st when yeah. <laughs> school's about to start and everyone <laughs> all your friends are moving in that's why their acceptance rate looks so good yeah. right so anyways we went to chrysler arena it was during the final four and they were playing villanova and i said you guys want to go watch the final four at chrysler arena with michigan in it and they're like yeah let's go we didn't even have a ticket and, you know, Mr. Fong, I'm like, hey, we flew in all the way from California. Oh, my kids want to check it out. Like, they let us in. So we watched the second half of it. But that was on video screen. And the arena was crazy. So, and I've been to a Michigan game when they're the away team and the Michigan fans are crazy. But how's Chrysler Arena during basketball season? Because I see it on TV. I just know what it was like during that Final Four. Yeah, so I only actually went to like two or three basketball games, which I'm a huge sports fan, so I don't really know why only three times, but I went to the OSU game. I actually went to one of the NIT games. Um, my dad was like, you got to go, and I was like, okay, I might as well go check it out. And the student section is so fun, but so different than football because for hockey and basketball games, the student sections know all these specific dances for the basketball games, and I was sitting in the student section. I was like, what is going on? Like, I don't know any of these dances or what's going on. I got on the jumbo screen like four times, <laughs> just sitting there looking around like, what is everyone doing? But it's super fun. You're like, the student section's right on the court. It's so awesome. So now that you're a sophomore, you're going to have to go to more than three games. Yeah, for sure. And you're going to have to learn some of these dances, right? So you yeah. can teach, <laughs> teach the younger ones. So let's take a little break because first we just got off to a great start talking about Michigan, but we are sponsored by Journey, Journey mm -hmm. Whiskey. That's Sean Pronger and his yeah. brother, Chris Pronger. You used to get it only in the Midwest, but that's how we pay these bills at these podcasts, right? To have awesome guests on like you. So if you're wanting to just check out a whiskey, we can even bring it to Ann Arbor. We can, we can get you some whiskey, Andy. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So to get into Michigan, I mean, we, I followed your academics all through Newport Harbor High School. AP this, AP that. It's like, shit, she, wherever she applies, she's going to get into. First, there wasn't a school you got declined or rejected from. What? No, there was. I applied oh, to 16 was? schools. Okay, wait. I don't even think I know this. Who rejected you? I got rejected from Northwestern, Vanderbilt, Duke, Cal. Um, where else? I have it somewhere on my phone. Okay, so while she's looking at that, and I do remember talking to, I think, your mom or your dad. And I said, all right, obviously she's going to apply to Virginia, North Carolina, Duke, Vanderbilt, Michigan. Uh, UT, USC. Cal, UT. Got denied from those as well. She's probably going to get into half of those, which actually the numbers did almost break into. Yeah, I got into eight out of 16 or okay. seven out of 16. So just about half. There you go. 16 schools. And 
now that I have Joshua going through this with a third child, I know how many schools I told him to apply to compared to with Sophia and uh, Julia and then other guests that I have. Do you think if you had to do it all over again, would you apply to 16 schools? I think I'd apply to between 7 and 12. I feel like 12 would be like a target number for me to get my applications down to. Right. Because I was also in the middle of volleyball season and I was an AP Calc and AP Physics. So that was like a lot going on at once. So you heard it because I tell people 10 to 12 is like the magic number. For sure. Right. And then if you're doing the common app, you just check, check, check. Check the boxes. Right. Yeah. And then maybe change the essay a little bit. Yeah. Right? Do you remember what your essay was on? My main common app essay, I did the prompt like about one specific life event and why it changed you. And I talked about my first speaking experience in youth and government. And that kind of transitioned into why I wanted to go into political science. And I like used to be super introverted and that like one experience kind of made me interested in policy and going into that field. How old were you when that happened? I was a sophomore. And now look at you. You speak so eloquently <laughs> Thank you. on this podcast. Your parents would be very proud of you, Annie. <laughs> so, and throughout Newport Harbor High School, how many AP classes did you have? I think I probably took around 10 or 11. Okay. That's AP and IBs together. So I won't mention the other student that I had on the podcast very early on in her career. Now she's graduated. But when she came on again the second time, we were talking about how to get a job and stuff. We talked about if you had to do it all over again, would you have taken all those AP classes? I want to hear it from you. Do you think it helped to take 10 to 12 AP classes? Or if you had to do it all over again, or if you're talking, listening, uh, if you're a sophomore, junior, what would you recommend? I personally like think I was super motivated. And when I got set on Michigan for, to be my number one, I was like, I'm going to take all these because if I don't and I don't get in, like I think I'm going to be super hard on myself and be like, I should have taken AP Euro or I should have taken AP Physics senior year because I definitely do think they look at course rigor. But if, you're no, if you know you're someone who can't handle all that on top of maybe playing a sport or doing other activities, I would say try to limit it and do really well in those one or two AP classes per year. Great advice. So you rush spring semester. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other Big Ten schools that rush in spring semester like Indiana, but then there are some, for example, Wisconsin that rushes when they're a freshman, right? So you've, you've met people a whole year. If, and I don't want you to be biased or anything, but in the top of your head, what would you say, here are the houses that I want to rush and here's the houses that I hope to get into or I'm striving. These are the ones I would like. Yeah, so we have 16 sororities, which is like a, a lot for most compared to most schools. And I think there's like around like 10 or 11 that are like really good that I would be happy being in. But I knew going into Rush, I really liked AKO, Sigma Kappa, DG, Tridel, and 80 Pi. So I kind of had my heart set on like five. I mean, I wouldn't say my heart set, but like I definitely was in, interested in five of them. And so Rush started online. It was on Zoom for the first two days, but so that was one round. And I, it, it went well. I got 12 houses back. So it goes from 16 to 12 to 7 to 2. And then going from the round from 12 to 7, I had a lot that I liked. And then going into the round of 7, I only had two that I liked left. So I kind of freaked out a little bit. I called my mom, like, what if I don't get these houses back for prep? And I really didn't think I was going to care that much about rushing. And then once you're in it, you, like, care way more than you think you will. You're drinking the Kool-Aid? Yeah, literally. And then I got both the houses I really liked back for pref, so I was super happy. And I ended up in DG, which I love it so far. I'm going to be living in the house in the fall, and I'm super, super excited about it. So DG, Delta Gamma, the anchor, yes. right? Do you agree with the statement? Because all the moms that are listening out there and all the females that are listening out there that are trying to get into a sorority, it all works out. It all works out. Everything works out, right, Annie? I, I mean even prepped, tried out over DG and was like a little bit bummed. I was super excited about DG, but was a little bit bummed I didn't get tried out. And I'm so, so happy I ended up in DG. It totally all works out because I called my mom and I was like, after bid day, I'm like, mom, I'm a little worried. I don't really know that many people. And she was like, just stick it out for a few weeks. And I'm so happy I did. What you did, that's almost like college too, right? Yeah. First of all, were you ever homesick? Not really. I mean, the first few weeks, it was a little bit stressful because since we don't rush, you don't have an automatic friend group. And every single one of my friends rushed immediately getting to school. And they're like posting with all these friends. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like everyone already has a friend group. Like, and you kind of have to figure it out on your own the first few weeks because you don't rush. And it definitely all worked out, but like, it's definitely a little bit stressful. Right. Especially when you see all your friends thinking that they're having the greatest lives of the, their, For sure. right? And they're, they're really not. At the end of yeah, the day, they're, really not. they're posting, oh, oh my God, I'm so miserable. But you know what? This picture will make it look really, really, yeah. really good. Let me ask you this because I think you have an advantage. 
because I don't know if you obviously are DG, but do you have uh, your friend group from the dorms? Now, maybe some of them are AKOs or, or Tridel in different sororities where everyone hangs out. Yeah. So right? my closest friends I'd say right now are still my friends from first semester. One of them's in DG with me. One's in Alpha Phi. One's not in a sorority. And then a lot of my other friends are in AD Pi, AKO, AKO, Sigma Kappa. So they're kind of all spread out, which I really like. Whereas some of my other friends at schools, they have friends in like maybe Theta and Kappa, but like that's it. And are the houses close to the, I forget if the sorority houses are close to the fraternity houses or are they kind of separate? So all of our frats have chapter houses and then tailgate houses and like satellite houses. So Alpha Phi and DG are the two uh, sorority houses that are on frat row. So literally my next door neighbor is Phi Psi and ASIG. DSIG is across the street. Fiji's down the street. Lambda's down the street. And then Tridel, AKO, those ones are by all the tailgate houses. So they're super close for game days and stuff, but they're farther from the chapter houses. So they'll have to walk there at night. I was just thinking about this because you came from a lunch trying to sell, not sell, but help Michigan people out, potential students. Does it feel like you're doing it all over again or a little bit different? Honestly, a little bit. Yeah. And I'm like almost a little bit nervous. Like I'm so excited to go back, but I'm like a little nervous, like see everyone for the first time. And like I'm starting over in a new house. I'm in a different like a different neighborhood, new classes. It's like a little bit. Yeah. What do you not like about University of Michigan? I think th there's nothing I can really pinpoint that I don't like. One thing I don't love is the dining halls. They weren't great, but like it is what it is. And then one thing I think could be better are recreational center on campus they're redoing it right now but the one that was right by my dorm wasn't great but then we do have the intramural sports building which was a little bit farther which is like brand new and super nice and when you say the dining hall because this is a common theme that i hear from students i always ask about like what do you not like what do you hate and they talk about the food they talk about the just the dining hall so are you talking about the aesthetics the dining hall are you talking about actually the food the food like it's it's not terrible like there's definitely options but it's not something i want to be eating every day well and that's right okay so we'll get into this because uh, anyone that's listening most college dorms the dining halls suck yeah the food sucks let's just flat yeah. out say it but i don't know what type of meal plan you're on so so usually there's like i'll just say the level one level two level three right yeah and were you on a certain level i was on level three okay so i read can know your answer because yep. if there's any recommendation <laughs> I would give, what would you tell? Because the parents want their kid to have, oh, the best meals. You want this. You want options. On the weekends only, what would you tell a student or a parent? What level would you take and why? You do not need level three. That's all I'm going to say right there. Thank you, you, Annie. Absolutely do not need it. <laughs> I visited like somewhere at UCLA, get level three. I ate the food there and I was like, this is like I'm going out to dinner and getting an actual meal. You're not going to eat at the dining hall as much as you think you're going to. Never, barely ever went for breakfast, maybe on a Saturday, Sunday morning, and then maybe two meals a day during the week, if that. Waste of money. You probably still have credit on your card. Yeah. <laughs> that you, could, you probably have throughout the sophomore year. All right. So I love asking this question. So when you're at University of Michigan, you're walking either on State Street or through the campus. What are some of your favorite places you like to eat? The places I like when my parents come are Monty, which is like kind of like a Trenta um, style restaurants like pizzas, pastas, super good Italian, good cocktails, and then of rice and men, which is a sushi place, which everyone's like, you're really eating sushi in Ann Arbor. I was just about to say. Yes, it is so good. <laughs> Annie, come on. It's awesome. There's sushi in Ann Arbor. There's actually like a few places I've been. I'm personally a fan. Okay. And then there's one other place. Um, it's called Cafe Zola, which is good breakfast. It's just like, you can always walk in and get a reservation. It's yeah. And you still answered the question that I love to ask when OB and Mel are in town, Missy's in town, where do you always like to go? Or when your friends are in town, where are they taking you? Which you already said, is there another hot spot? Yeah. Frida Batitos. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's like famous in Ann Arbor. The best. It's like, I think it's like Greek style, Moroccan style burgers. And then they have these like milkshake kind of drinks. And then they also do like fishbowl drinks, which is super fun. That sounds good. It's awesome. So how many times have you actually been to the library? Mm, probably five times. Right. I, I mean, and I, I don't remember what the library looks like, but I always like to look at the library to see who's studying and who's in there. It's probably a different crowd, which we'll get to because I do have my take on Michigan and Ann Arbor, which I scared the living shit out of my kids <laughs> when they were there. You had no problem because you're smarty pants. But you went to the library five times. 
Are you going to frequent it more your sophomore year, junior year? Probably more this year. I have like harder classes this semester. And then also in the sorority house, there's not a ton of space to study. And then the law libraries, I always went there if I needed somewhere to study for like a final. Like you could literally hear a pin drop. It's dead silent. But my dorm actually had a ton of study rooms. So that's kind of where I was most of the time. Because most campuses have different libraries, right? And then your friend group or your Greek community probably studies at what, because we, at where I went to Long Beach State, we had like the same floor where it was just Greek row, right? Yeah. A social hour. If you really wanted to study, you go to a different floor. So yeah, I'm sure that sure. happens at Michigan too. Yeah. So our experience at Ann Arbor, and I remember Julia loved the campus. Beautiful, right? The brick, everything. And we're walking, but everyone there, they just looked so smart. They looked so and they, smart. Annie, it was so intense. I go, I got to get out of here. Like, they look like future doctors, veterinarians. The I'm not racist or anything, but a lot of Middle Eastern. Like, they just look smart. After the game, they're all cheering. And then they just... They go to study. Yes. I go out and I see, I'm i in my tiny top and pants and I see them studying. And I'm like, wow, I feel terrible about myself. So they do, right? Because yes, I'm like, I sure. think they're going back to study. Because in my dorm, so it was six floors. I was on the top floor. The fourth, fifth, and sixth floor were social going out floors. And then the first, second, and third were like kind of more nerdy people, like people that are going to be studying instead of going out. Shh. Right. You're walking. <laughs> Shh. Be quiet. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> we were going out for Halloween. It was like a Tuesday or Wednesday because we everyone goes out that entire week. And I was like, oh, my gosh, can we please get out of this dorm? I am so embarrassed right now. Poli sci. Yeah. You want to go into th – that's your major. I'm trying to apply to the School of Public Policy in the winter. But like poli sci, international relations, it's all kind of the same. What was your favorite class? I'm trying to think. I, a lot of my classes were super basic. One class I actually didn't think I was going to like that I loved. I had to take two semesters of Spanish. And going in, I, I'd taken up to Spanish four, but like did not know that much. And it was like the teacher only spoke Spanish. And at the end of the year, my final was a 10 minute conversation with my professor. And at the end of like at the beginning of summer, I would say I was like, could go to Mexico and get myself around. Like, so I learned a ton and I think I might minor in Spanish now. Un poquito, no mucho. <laughs> oh my gosh. Say <laughs> habla espanol. So, what was the average like class size ratio? So, for languages, math, and then English classes, they're all 18. And then for, I had a stats class that was 650, an econ that was wait, like wait, 500. Wait, time out. 650 students? Yeah. Where did you sit? Um, I sat in like the middle. Okay. Like, definitely not the front row, not asking all the questions, but not at the back where I like. Don't pay attention. Was the front row like floors one, two, and three, and then the back rows were like floor five, five and six, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> in my second semester stats class, there was like six kids on my floor that were in it, and we all always sat together a little bit closer to the back. If anyone's listening, like who, is there a teacher that stands out? Like, oh my God, okay. right? In, in a sorority or fraternity or when I was on the basketball team, everyone said, take this class, take this class. You got to take this teacher. So who would it be at Michigan? I wouldn't say he's, like, a standout teacher, like, because his class is so hard. But I'd say, like, the first day of class I sat down, it was Econ 101. And he pulled up a video of him speaking on CNN, which sounds like he does frequently. He, like, writes for the New York Times. So he was, like, super involved. And, like, I thought that was super cool because even though, like, the class was super, super hard, it, you knew you were getting taught from, like, one of the best people ever. And, like, I want to go into poli sci and stuff like that and being on CNN or like writing for the New York Times, that's, that was something that was super cool to me. And obviously you, you, you know what you want to do, you, your major. And, I'll, and I tell people this all the time, whatever you study in college, sometimes it's not even what you do in your career. It's all about the experience and networking. Mm -hmm. You had the opportunity to go to London this summer, a program. Why don't you talk a little bit about that for those that might be after their freshman year going, wait, what's this? Yeah, so I applied in around January. I think you can apply up to like maybe March or April. Uh, but my sister did the year before. Uh, it's a three-week program at the London School of Economics and Political Science. So you apply for one course. It's just a three-week course. Um, it's about three hours of lecture in the morning and then an hour and a half of discussion in the afternoon. And I took an international relations class. Um, one of my professors was Australian. And then our lecturer was from London, which was super cool. And my class was really focused on American politics, so like getting outside perspectives. I had a ton of Australian kids in my class and other European kids, which was super cool. And then I lived in the dorms. I stayed with Maddie Malou. We were just in a double. 
and we got to go to the Royal Ascot Horse Races, Wimbledon. We did all of the markets like Camden Market um, and stuff like that, which was awesome. So I definitely recommend it to anyone thinking about doing something, going into their sophomore year that maybe doesn't want to get an internship yet, but maybe wants to get extra credits or put something on their resume. And are you looking to still go abroad your junior year? Yeah, right now I'm thinking about Madrid or semester at sea, possibly. So if you are really thinking about Madrid, now you can go listen to, wait, do I have, no, I have Milan, Barcelona, London. For those you're listening, and after you go to college and your junior year comes ab- abroad, I have a series. It's a study abroad series. So a lot of Wisconsin students have been on it talking about where they're going because they didn't know where to go and what to do. Like, where to stay? When should my parents come? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And like seeing where you want to visit and stuff while you are abroad is definitely something I'm interested in. And and remember, abroad's just a home anchor base because you just said you, how many countries did you go see? We only did one weekend in Paris because we wanted to stay for the horse races. Okay. Because I think three weeks, it's like you definitely want to spend a lot of time like discovering where you are. So like London, there's so much to do there. So we discovered a lot there. But had I been there for longer, I probably would have taken one or two more trips. You'll have that opportunity. I think Julia said she went to 10 and a half countries oh, wow. in like 13 weeks. She was only in Barcelona for the weekend, two weekends. Yeah. Like during the week. Which I think is great. plenty. Like that in London, we were in London for two weekends and then one weekend in Paris. Right. So, especially in this community, this area, Orange County, everyone wears their sweatshirt brands, right? Where they want to go to school. If you had to do it all over again or the advice that you would give to a student listening, what would it be? Well, one thing I always hear, I've been talking to a ton of the seniors that I'm friends with, and I'm like, oh, are you applying to Michigan? Like kind of trying to sell my school because that's kind of what everyone does. And they're like, no, I'm not going to get in. And I'm like, I didn't think I was going to get in. So it's just throw out the application. If you're even somewhat qualified and you have a little bit of interest in it, throw out the application because you never know if you're going to get in. That's great advice because I – Josh was a senior. I said, there's your stretch school. Just do it. It's yeah. part of the Common App. Why not? Yeah. Check the box. And I always say every year is different. Every year is different for the students who's getting in, who's not getting in. But you're right. If you're somewhat qualified and you have interest, go for it. Yeah. So what advice would you give to that mom and dad? Maybe that tiger hover mom and dad. Take a step back because you don't want to be forcing your kid to apply to somewhere they're not going to be happy. Like I think my parents were like the perfect amount of involved. I made my list. I was like, this is where I want to go. And I didn't want them really intervening with that because I knew if they were to say somewhere and I didn't want to go and I just threw out the application, they would have been like, if I got in, like, oh, maybe we should go look at that when I know in reality I don't want to go there. So let your student make their list. Let them find what they like and don't kind of try to push them one way or another. Great advice. I think when you were a junior or senior, you showed me your list a couple times. You probably still have it on your phone because yeah. I still have my kids on their phone, like who they got accepted to, who they did it, just in case someone goes. People always ask. They'll ask, yeah. right? So you pulled it up. Yeah. I even have like my college essays and everything too. People are like, what'd you write about? Like, do you have any ideas? Like any, any advice? So that's a great one because it's coming up for some seniors right now. And, and Josh was asking, what should I write on? I go, what do you, what are you passionate about? What do you want to write about? I, I, and I tell them, don't write about the, the winning shot, the winning goal, yeah. ASB. What advice would you give on that part? Definitely try to separate yourself with things. I know it's specifically for Michigan, there's a community essay and then the why Michigan essay, and they put a super, super big focus on the why Michigan essay. So if you're writing that essay, Make sure you're su- like doing your research and like you make it sound like you really, really want to go there because they can tell in the essay when they're reading it. I read my mom, my mom, my essay to my mom the other day and she was like, whoa, like you really sound like you want to go there. And I was like, that's what you need to do because like, everyone can say, oh, like I really want to do this major because of this. But you need to say, I want to do this major at Michigan. I want to get involved in these clubs. I want to be like on this exact board for this specific thing, just like showing how you can get involved, how you can differentiate differentiate yourself from other students. What you said is perfect. Just separating yourself. How do you, how do you, because everyone's at that point, it's unweighted 4.0. Everyone's yeah. top AP, everyone's student body or athletic. So it's that, how can you separate yourself? Yeah, find something niche about yourself that you can write about. And, and it make sure that you write it and it sounds and it sounds like And don't you. let your college counselor, like if she wants to edit something and you think it sounds good, be like, no, I don't want to change that. Right. Don't let them steer you in one way or another because, yeah, they can definitely help a lot. But you also don't want your voice to get taken out of your own essay. 
Annie O'Brien, Wolverine, going to be a sophomore, headed back to Ann Arbor. She's excited. She's pumped up. She's ready for two by, not in and outs, two by two, (laughs) three by three, and four by four. She's talking like the Greek community, having fun. Well, look forward to hearing all the good stories from your parents. And then when you come back into town, and we've been working hard to get you on this podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Very welcome. Again, Annie O'Brien, go Wolverines, Jim Harbaugh. Let's make the prediction now. Okay. You want to make the prediction yeah. now? Football season. First, are they going to beat Ohio State or not? Yes. I have lots of confidence we're going to beat Ohio State. Are we going to have a we? I don't even go to that. How many losses is Wolverines going to have, and are they going to make it to the national championship game? I don't think we're going to have any losses. We do have an easy schedule, which everyone keeps bagging on. But next year, it'll be a little tougher. Oh, yeah. That's right. We got UCLA, USC, University of Oregon, and UW coming in. Yeah, we do. We're ready. So, no losses, national champions or not? I think national champions. You think, or are they going to be national champions? They're going to be national champions. There you go. Annie O'Brien (laughs) making the prediction now in the summer. Fonger News, out.